Hey guys, this is a super impromptu video where I just got really excited about this video topic of how much money do authors actually make, like specifically from book royalties. And so I am on my phone um, and I'm gonna pull up my computer and do a screen share. And so it's again, just very informal, but I just really got excited about this idea of showing you, physically showing you um, an example of a book on Amazon, ebook and paperback, and also how different document sizes can change your royalties. Um, other factors that come into play can change your royalties. So I'm gonna set you down and show you my screen. There's a bit of a double chin angle here, but I am going to pull up my screen now. This is Kindle Direct Publishing, which is commonly referred to as KDP. And I have a whole video on how to upload to KDP. So this video is not gonna teach you step-by-step, step, but you can go watch that next. I'll link it in the description box below if you're curious and you wanna go watch that and learn how to upload. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a dummy book. I'm gonna go over here and you can see like the Jenny Key, here's the Stolen Kingdom, here is my draft for The Cursed Hunter, which is on pre-order um, on Amazon right now as I'm filming this video. So let's start with making a Kindle ebook. Okay, I'm going to speed through the setup section. I'm not going to explain what I'm doing, but again, I do have a video on that, which I will link below that you can watch afterwards. Just go click on it afterwards to watch like specifically why I fill out the certain things that I do in each column. <laughs> All right, so here's the first factor that comes into play, which is uploading the ebook manuscript. And the trick here is that depending on the size of your book, it will affect both the ebook and the paperback and hardcover price and probably audiobook too. I haven't gotten to that point yet. But the thing that you need to know is that when you have an ebook, they, the print on demand companies, whether you use KDP here or draft to digital Smashwords, Ingram Spark, Lulu, I don't know if Lulu has ebooks, but anyway, the platforms that you use will charge you a delivery fee for an ebook and then they will also charge you a um, printing fee if it's a paperback or hardcover and so both the delivery fee and the print costs come out of the money that you make before you split the rest of it with the print on demand company and you get your cut I mean, you might think you know like with an ebook as an indie author um it's very common to have a 70 percent royalty on amazon and there are reasons that you might not have that, which we'll go into, but even if you have a 70% royalty, um, it might not be as much as you think it is. For example, if it's a dollar, we're just going really basic math here, you might think that means I get 70 cents, but actually first they take the delivery fee from that dollar amount and then they split it with you if it's 70% or 30% or whatever else it might be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to give you um, a couple examples so that you can actually see the difference in the delivery fee. So I'm gonna pick a larger book. I think the Stolen Kingdom will pick the Moby file, which is the ebook version. And I wanna say that this book is roughly 80,000 words. All right, so we've reached the pricing page. I'm gonna zoom in here and show you a ton of different examples for the ebook and the paperback and kind of explain and break down how royalties work, at least on Amazon. We're not really gonna touch on the KDP Select here because that's based on, you're getting paid based on page reads instead of um, on sales. So that's a whole other ball game. But we're gonna zoom on down here to the pricing section. Um, all right, so what I really want you guys to notice here is how things are going to change. So let's start with eBooks, keep that in mind. So if we do um, an average eBook, very common at least in the fantasy, uh, space is a $3.99 ebook. And I'm going to click 70% royalties to start out. Um, and so the first thing that you're going to notice here is that right underneath the list price, it says to get a 70% royalty, your book must be $2.99 to $9.99. So if it's less than that, you have to do the 35% royalty. And if it's more than $9.99, the same thing is true. And so to get that 70% royalty, you actually have to be within the $2.99 to 
range, which uh, for a lot of indie authors can be difficult if they're trying to maybe set up their first book in a series a little bit cheaper. They might have to sacrifice the royalties to get a reader into the series. So the first thing that you're gonna notice here is that under the 70% royalty rate, there is a 10 cents delivery fee for this particular book. And so that means that off of a $3.99 book, if you're selling it for $3.99, your royalty is $2.72. And if you accidentally clicked this 35% and you didn't realize it for some reason, you can see that under the 35%, they're not charging you for a delivery, but the royalty is $1.40. And so that's the first thing to notice. But then what if you wanted to price your book at the lowest possible number? If you have a book like this, it's about 80,000 words, you're gonna notice that the delivery fee doesn't change, but now your royalty is $2.02. And so that's just to give you guys an initial idea, but keep in mind, this is dependent on the size of the book and also the fact that it's an ebook. So we're gonna dig into this more, but I wanna show you one more example, or maybe two. Um, let's say $4.99. So what you'll see here is that a $5 book, which is honestly getting kind of pricey in the indie space. Um, if you're an indie author, it can be difficult to sell books at this amount. Traditional publishers do this, um, and I have been told that you can technically price your book higher to make it look like it's in the traditional publishing space, like say $6.99. Um, and then look at that, that's a fantastic royalty of $4.82. Um, that is drastically higher than anything a traditionally published author would get for a book royalty. Uh, but in the indie space, can you sell your books for that amount? It is actually very difficult and it's actually, it's a strategy that you can try. You can try to make it look like your books are in the traditionally publishing space, but that means that you're also going to need to spend a lot on a cover that really looks like it fits in with other traditionally published books. And you're gonna need to spend a lot on really quality editing and really, really amazing marketing to get people interested in this book in the first place. So it's a really it's a really big risk. And honestly, most indies will choose to do the two to three ninety nine range because of that. Okay, so that's the seventy percent. But what if I want to price my book for a dollar ninety nine? It's not going to let me do the 70% royalty, I'm gonna to have to switch it over to 35% royalty. And now you can see that they're not charging a delivery fee, but the amount of money that I make on a $1.99 ebook is now just 70 cents. So that's not great. <laughs> um, and that's why as much as I love putting my books on sale, I don't do it all the time because there is very little return on investment here. I am not making a lot of money on a book like this. And this is a large book, by the way. Um, but again, there's no delivery fee at the 35% royalty. So that can help you out a little bit. Now, what if you wanted to make it 99 cents? And you'll notice that underneath here, the list price, it says your book must be 99 cents to $200, <laughs> so they're not gonna let you go lower than 99 cents. There is actually a way around this if you publish through places like draft to digital or Smash, Smash Words, Smash Books. I don't use the second one, I use draft to digital But if you made your book, for example, free on one of those sites, once it's free on other platforms like Apple Books, Barnes & Noble, Nook, etc., Kobo, then you can call and have them price match. And so there is a way to set your book to free, but it's a little bit more complicated. And again, that's another strategy altogether. We're not gonna talk about strategy in this video. I'm just trying to show you numbers. I'm so detailed. I'm sorry that I go on tangents. I hope you guys don't mind. Give this video a thumbs up if you're cool with me <laughs> oversharing. <laughs> so now you can see how 99 cents, your royalty is 35 cents. And one of the reasons that I've been thinking about book prices so much lately is because I actually have a 99 cent sale for the anniversary of The Stolen Kingdom, the six month anniversary, which is February 20th. And the sale is February 20th through the 27th of 2020. So I will link that below and you can go check out the sale. It's on all platforms, all vendors. Go check it out if you want a really awesome book for just 99 cents. But what you have to notice about this is that the royalty is honestly kind of terrible. 35 cents per book is not great. If I were to sell, say, 100 books in a day, which is an awesome amount of sales for a day, I still am only making $35 in one day from 100 book sales. And so if I were to sell 1,000 books in a day, that's only 350. Is my math right? 
<laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> $350 from a thousand book sales, which is awesome, but also not great financially. And so you can see how that's one of the reasons that most authors don't do 99 cent sales very often. So this gets into strategy again, which I don't want this video to be too much about strategy, but again, that's why usually authors put it on sale, but they don't permanently do this. Or if they do permanently have their book at a very low, you know, 99 cents or $1.99 or even free, it's with a very strong strategy behind it of having that sell through or read through, whatever you want to call it, into other books in the series. All right, so that's with that particular file size of a book, but let's scroll back up to where did we upload the book? I think it was in content. I'm gonna click on content. I'm gonna go back and upload a different book instead. All right, so we're gonna use The Cursed Hunter, which is the third book in my series, uh, the Stolen Kingdom series, and it is a novella, so it's much smaller. I think currently, um, I am still editing it and I'm starting to add more words to it, but I think it's right around the 40,000 word mark. So what I'm gonna do is see if that changes the delivery fee. This is not a Mobi file, but it's fine because we're not worried about how it looks and you know the final product right now. We're just worried about the size of the file. We're not gonna worry about changing the cover or anything else. I literally just wanna see if the size of the book changes the delivery fee. All right, so we're scrolling down to pricing. Um, and I'm gonna have it at 70%. And then I'm gonna start with, we did $3.99 last time, right? So I'm gonna start with $3.99. And what the heck, the delivery fee is higher. I think actually that's because it's a Word doc instead of a Mobi file. This is very interesting. So I'm obviously like finding this out with you guys. The delivery fee went up for a smaller book. It's half the length of the other book that we uploaded. The Stolen Kingdom was around 80,000. The Curse Hunter is around 40,000 currently. I think it's because it's a Word doc. And so I think I can actually back this up because back when I first started publishing, um, Evelyn's number had a much higher delivery fee. I think it was almost, it was between 30 to 40 cents for delivery and that's because it was like a hundred thousand words and it was a word doc and so that immediately yeah it would be it would be just a little over double this delivery fee here for a word doc and I think actually this is very interesting to know that the Mobi file is smaller and so just by being a different file the delivery is cheaper and you might think hey what's what's five cents it's not that big a difference but after a hundred sales a thousand sales five thousand sales it's gonna make a difference and so i do have a video on how i turn my books into mobi files i will link that in the description box below as well for you to watch after this video but what i'm seeing here is that the royalty is it's not a huge difference it's two dollars and 69 cents and then if you were at a 35 percent royalty for whatever reason it would be a dollar 40. And so let's just bop around and give you guys kind of a visual of the low end, the high end, and then the 35% range. Here's $2.99. You can see that it's literally a whole dollar gone. You make a dollar 99 at this point off of this particular book. And so this is why I wanted to show you guys instead of just tell you, because not only does this happen with eBooks, but it also happens with paperbacks. So really quick, I'm gonna show you the 35% royalties and then we're gonna hop over to paperbacks. This is your $1.99 and you can see how it's just not applicable to do the 70% royalty anymore. And the delivery fee is gone again, which is awesome. I do appreciate that. And now the royalty is 70 cents. It's kind of the same no matter the size of the book. If you're under the um, $2.99 and you go to the lower end, kind of doesn't matter anymore, to be honest. And so it looks like I'm gonna guesstimate that the 90 cent book is also 35 cents. Yep, there it is. I don't know if this applies to KDP Unlimited, but otherwise you can pretty much guarantee that they're making pennies, literally pennies. And so I just want you guys to know that, to appreciate authors and to know that usually when we do this, our goal is reviews. We wanna get the word out about the book. We wanna reach as many new readers as possible. And so if you wanna help your favorite authors when they're doing a 99 cent sale like this, and you know that they're not making much money off of it, they're doing it to reach new readers, you can help them by writing reviews and by helping them reach new readers and telling everyone about that sale. Because again, 
that's a new reader who will want to read their other books. And so it, it can be worth it, even though financially it doesn't look like it. It can be a fantastic business move. Okay, now let's go ahead and set up a paperback and look at the royalties for that. We're going to start with the Stolen Kingdom, the larger book. All right, so the first thing that you'll notice when you do a paperback is that they tell you the printing cost right here at the bottom. As soon as you have a document of some kind uploaded, they're going to tell you based on the page count right here, how much it will cost to print. And I think possibly the um, size of the book in general, that's a big number. Like if I wanted to sell my book for $5, which by the way, is not an option, which you'll see in a minute, I would only be making 43 cents a book. But you guys are going to find this very interesting. First of all, you know how I mentioned you cannot price your book for $5. They will tell you a minimum price here, just like with the ebook. So the minimum price that I could set for a book this size is $7.62. And so just for kicks, let's go ahead and set that price and see what happens with the royalties. Um, yeah, just what I thought it would be. It is $0 royalties. So not surprising, right? What they're basically saying is here's the cost of printing. And then we need at least this much to make it worth our time and effort spent. So you also have this expanded distribution option and you'll notice that the royalty rates here are 40% versus 60%. We're not going to go really in depth over expanded distribution, but if you hover over it, you can see that it says you can reach more readers by distributing your paperback through bookstores, online retailers, libraries, academic institutions, etc. So that is a great option, but you'll notice that the royalties, well, you won't see this yet, but you can see that they're 40%, so they're going to be less. So let's put the book at something that's on the higher end, which I would say, whoops, $15.99 is something that is like kind of like a brand new release. And so the royalty here is fantastic. I don't know about you guys, but I've heard some authors say that their ebooks make them more money than paperbacks, but at least for me so far, I have not found that to be the case. I definitely see that paperbacks have much higher royalties because $5 is amazing. I mean, the ebook was only $3.99, so there's no way you're going to get a $5 <laughs> uh, royalty. But if you are in a different space or if you're doing different pricing strategies and maybe you make your ebook like I don't know, $5.99 or $6.99, and then you make your paperback super cheap, which we'll do in a second just to show you, um, it could make sense that you make more off of an ebook. So it really depends on what you price your book and on how big the file is, like we're seeing, and also which royalty you're getting, the 60% or the 40%, 70% or 30%. And so you guys have probably heard authors say, you know, it's complicated when you ask, how much money do you make per book? Now you can see why we say how complicated it is. So let's put in, I think the Stolen Kingdom, when it first came out was, I think $14.99. This is a fantastic royalty. Although I will point out that if you have a $14.99 book and you're making $4.42 in royalties, that's over $10 gone. So if you see an author pricing their book a little bit higher, it might be because they have bills to pay. And this is why, because your royalty is not as high as you usually think it will be. And so now I think the Stolen Kingdom is currently $13.99. And so you can see that my royalty is about $3.82. And if I was to put it on sale, like I did for I think for my birthday or something recently, um, then the royalties continue to go down. And so let's say maybe down the road, I want to put it on sale for $10.99 or even let's say $9.99. So you can kind of see the differences here. So the royalty here is $1.42 compared to $4.42. And that is a drastic difference over time in many book sales. That is a very big difference um, in you know, paying your bills. <laughs> Let's do $11.99 just to give you guys kind of a visual for this particular book size. But what I want to do next is I want to actually pull up The Cursed Hunter, which again is half the size of The Stolen Kingdom. So this is around 80,000 words and The Curse Hunter is around 40,000 words. And let's see the difference. Okay, I was trying to show you guys The Curse Hunter since that's the example we had when we were doing the eBooks, but because I don't have the final cover for my cover designer yet, it was giving me all these errors and it wouldn't push it through to the pricing page. So I decided to grab a book that I do have, which is How Your Book Sells Itself right here. And this book is roughly the same size as The Curse Hunter. And so that'll just give you an idea of a smaller book. 
and you'll notice that we have it priced for $9.99 because of the fact that it's smaller. So let's go ahead and go over to this page. And actually, let me see how many pages it is. Do, do, do. It says it's 183 pages right here. All right, so the price for How Your Book Sells Itself is already $9.99. You're gonna notice the same note below the price that you saw when we were looking at The Stolen Kingdom, which is that there is a minimum list price required, and that is, as they say here, calculated based on your book's printing costs and all that jazz to make sure that there is actually a royalty. And so you'll notice that with the $9.99 book, it is $2.97. And so that's not an amazing royalty, but it's certainly not bad. <laughs> and so that's why, because the book was smaller, we were able to do um, a lower price and still get a good royalty. Whereas if I was to put in, let's see the minimum here is 756. Let's see what happens. See, now it's not zero. Do you remember how with the Stolen Kingdom, when we put in the minimum price, we had zero royalties? Well, with How Your Book Sells Itself, it looks like we still have a very small royalty, which is not bad, especially considering compared to ebooks. So again, I don't totally understand when authors say that their ebooks make them more money than um, paperbacks, because for me, paperbacks are almost always going to make more money. But let's look at the high end of $14.99. And so now you'll notice that there is a difference. It's $5.97 royalty. And I think we even plugged in uh, $15.99 at one point for a paperback. So let's see what that says. So that is an amazing royalty. However, it's a smaller book and readers will not be happy in most cases if you price a book this high. You have to really look at what's in your genre and make sure that it's meshing with your genre, just like we talked about earlier with ebooks. Um, and so $15.99 is not a very common price in nonfiction. So this is going to be a lot harder to sell. So you might have fantastic royalties, but are you going to have a lot of readers actually buying it? That is honestly the balance that you have to constantly kind of juggle is like, how can I make sure I have an income, but also make sure that readers think it's a worthwhile price and actually want to buy it, if that makes sense. So let's go down to, I don't know, let me show you a couple options. So here's $12.99. I think we did that on The Stolen Kingdom. Here's the comparison royalty for a book that's half the size. Um, if you were to write a novella, this is going to give you a good example, a good guesstimate. Um, here is $11.99. So I feel like this royalty of $4.17 is comparable to the royalty we got from the Stolen Kingdom when it was set around $14, $13 or $14. So as strange as it sounds, if you write shorter books, you make more money. I know that's crazy and I know that you still want to, again, factor in if it's worth it. You don't want to be charging a reader $30 for a 30-page book. You know what I mean? Like just don't go off the deep end <laughs> with this knowledge because you still want to respect readers, you want to respect your genre expectations and what is just commonly expected. But um, I will just note that uh, the 40% royalty here is $1.37 while the 60% royalty is $3.57. So even on a 10.99 book, this is really good. And so when Mandy and I went out to price How Your Book Sells Itself, we said, how low can we go where we still make at least a semi good royalty, but we can also price the book lower for our readers. And so that is why we chose $9.99. If you liked this video, then you would probably also like the video that I just did about how much money I actually made from books specifically in January of 2020, because I just got my numbers in, I went through it all, and I just created this video over on Patreon actually for my patrons in the video club. So I give them exclusives every month and this month I wanted to share with them how much money did I make for my books. I share KDP income, Ingram Spark income, draft to digital income, and my website sales income. Again, that is linked below just like everything else. There's so many links today, but I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm a little bit nervous because like I enjoyed filming it, but I have no idea what you guys are going to think. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up to let me know and even better, put a comment of what you enjoyed about it. And if you want more videos like this where I kind of talk straightforward about money because I was surprised I kind of enjoyed it. And so if there are any other video topics you want, 
put them in the comments below because I have an ongoing list of video ideas that's like a mile long. And so I very well might get to it. And if you really want a video, go check out the video club on Patreon because they get first pick and they vote for my videos and help me pick which ones to focus on next. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, check out all the links below, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.